Hello. In this video, we're going to look at some interesting calculations that nobody seems to have bothered to do regarding the balloon analogy of cosmology. And most critically, we're going to show that a balloon whose surface volume matches the size of the observable universe has a circumferential expansion rate equal to the Hubble constant. You're probably familiar with the balloon analogy of cosmology. Put some dots on a balloon, and the dots are meant to represent galaxies. Inflate the balloon, and the dots, or galaxies, move apart from one another. All of them move apart from one another. The balloon analogy goes back to at least Arthur Eddington, and this is a quote from his book, The Expanding Universe. And in it, he just speaks of three dimensions. He doesn't use the balloon model as a four-dimensional model. Understanding a four-dimensional sphere is tough to do, so we will use a couple of analogies first. Let us first look at a line. A line is one-dimensional, and the distance from the center to the edge could be viewed as a radius. If we take our line, we can curve it around and make a circle. A circle is two-dimensional and the circle has its own radius. The surface of the circle is one-dimensional. It's the line. We're going to step this up one dimension. Here we have what's supposed to be a circle. Um, this is a two-dimensional sheet of paper. The area of this circle, when folded around, is supposed to equal the area of the softball. So the surface area of the softball here, if spread out, would equal the area we see on that two-dimensional piece of paper. Now if we take our piece of paper, our 2D surface here, from the center to the edge of it we have a radius. And taking the paper, or the 2D area, and curving it around to cover the surface of a softball, we find that the ball, now it's 3D, and it has a radius going from the center of the ball, because we're not going to cut this ball in half, but for going from the center of the ball to the edge is the radius of that sphere. So if we take a one-dimensional line, and we curve it around to form a two-dimensional circle, we find that the radius of the line is greater than the radius of the circle. And if we take the radius of the circle for our 2D area and curve it around to form a 3D sphere, the radius of the circle is also greater than the radius of the sphere that it makes. And from the previous two examples, let us look at what we get if we curve a 3D space around to form the surface volume of a 4D sphere. So we'll take a 3D sphere and we're talking about the volume, that's the inner space of the sphere. And we curve it around to create a 4D sphere. What do we get? Well, it might be a cheap way out, but we can't imagine what a 4D sphere would look like. It's beyond our ability. So we're forced to use other methods to explore it. So we're going to take our 3D sphere, and our focus is on the volume the inner volume, the volume, if we curve it around, as we're going to show over here, we have a problem because this is two-dimensional. We're going to preserve the fourth dimension because that's the interest for us. And the surface, instead of a one-dimensional line, we're going to have to have it represented as three dimensions. So 3D are hidden in this one dimension. So in our two-dimensional representation of our four-dimensional sphere, we have to sacrifice two dimensions. The surface is three-dimensional. And that surface represents the universe. So the universe is the three-dimensional surface volume of our four-dimensional sphere. 
The term we're going to use for the entire structure is hyperverse. So we will refer to this entire thing here as the hyperverse and the surface as the universe. So again, the surface of the hyperverse is the universe. And importantly, the center of the hyperverse is hollow. So in our model, the universe is the 3D surface volume of a four-dimensional hollow hypersphere. The whole structure, surface included, we will call the hyperverse. So now, let us ask if the universe is the surface volume of a four-dimensional sphere, how big is this hyperverse? And we can solve this using standard geometry equations. The volume for a 3D sphere is 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. And this is r sub o. So in our sphere, in our universe, we're located in the center of the sphere. In every direction we look, we can see a certain distance, the same distance. And that's the radius of the observable universe, r sub o. Over here, we would view this again as the surface volume of a 4D sphere. The surface volume of a 4D sphere is 2 times pi squared times r cubed. And this is r sub h. This is the radius of the hyperverse. This is a different radius than r sub o. So r sub h is not equal to r sub o. So we're going to set the two volumes equal. Our volume of the observable universe, when curved around, to be the surface volume of 4D sphere. So we set the two equations equal, and we will solve for r sub h over here, r sub h. This is what we're after. And we find that r sub h is equal to the radius of the observable universe times the cube root of 2 divided by 3 pi. So how big is the radius of the observable universe, r sub o? Well, estimates from our current precision cosmology place that distance at about 46 to 46 and a half billion light years. So we take the term for calculating r sub h, and we have a value ranging from 46 to 46 and a half billion light years for the r sub o, the radius of the observable universe. So we'll just take the mid value term, plug it into the equation, and we get a value of 27.58659 billion light years. Now that's the radius of the observable universe over here, r sub h. And as you recall from the examples of one dimension going to two and two to three, this makes sense because the radius of the next higher dimension should be less than the dimension that produced it. The universe is about 13.8 billion years old. If we divide the hyperverse radius, r sub h, by the age of the universe, we can find out how fast the hyperverse has been expanding. So we'll take our value for the radius of the hyperverse, 27.58659 billion light years, and divide it by the age of the universe, or 13.8 billion years, and we get 1.999. And that's 1.999 light years per year. Now, despite the current precision of cosmology, measurements are still subject to error and variation. 1.999 suggests the true answer is 2. So if the universe were the surface volume of a hypersphere, then it is expanding at twice the speed of light. And if you're wondering or thinking to yourself, but nothing can move faster than the speed of light, that statement applies to motion within the universe. Let us look at another calculation we can make from the model. And this is the one that gives us the Hubble constant. Now, if the universe was the surface volume of a hyperverse, we can ask, how fast is the circumference expanding? 
The rate of change of the circumference of a circle is directly related to the rate of change of its radius. And that relationship is 2 pi. That is, if we take delta c sub h, that's the rate of change of the circumference of the hyperverse, or any circle, and divide it by the rate of change of the radius, in this case delta r sub h, we get 2 pi. Now we've already calculated that the rate of change of the radius is 2 times the speed of light, 2c. So we can rearrange this equation here and we find that delta c sub h is equal to 2 pi times 2c. Now we can ask the big question. What is the rate of growth of the circumference per point of the circumference? That is its fractional increase. And to do this we'll divide the previous value by the circumference of the hyperverse. So we take delta c sub h and divide it by the circumference of the hyperverse which is 2 pi times 2 c and the circumference is 2 pi times the radius and this cancels out and we get 2 times the speed of light divided by the radius of the hyperverse. And that value is the Hubble constant. The Hubble constant is a measure of the rate that galaxies separate from one another. The most recent measurement from the Planck mission is about 67.8 kilometers per second per megaparsec of separation. And hopefully this will make it a little simpler. It may not, but if we want to convert megaparsecs kilometers, we get a value of 2.197 times 10 to the minus 18th per second. Now, 2c divided by the radius of the hyperverse, we calculate out to be 2.173 times 10 to the minus 18th per second. These values here are almost spot on. And matching the Hubble constant is a significant result. It's not likely to be a coincidence that the model has an expansion rate equal to what we measure for the separation rate of galaxies. The balloon analogy, so often used in cosmology, may represent the actual structure of the universe. If the universe were the surface volume of a 4D hypersphere, we find a radial into the fourth dimension expansion rate equaling twice the speed of light. Its circumferential expansion matches the Hubble constant. And this is in addition to a surface of a 4D sphere giving us a positively curved, finite, enclosed space as favored in modern cosmology. And this is just the beginning. If the universe is expanding radially at twice the speed of light, radially into the fourth dimension, you might wonder, how do we experience it? Or do we? We'll argue in other videos and papers in this series that this is the foundation of time. The cosmological arrow of time points one way in the direction that space is expanding, but they never tell you which way space is expanding. The hyperverse model gives us that direction. The expansion is into the fourth dimension. That 2C radial expansion immediately suggests a reason that nothing in the universe can move faster than the speed of light. The speed of light is limited to one half of the radial expansion rate. And in consideration of the balloon model, we can actually consider the thickness of the balloon. Now if the universe is the three-dimensional surface volume of a four-dimensional hypersphere, the surface will have a thickness in the fourth dimension. I'm going to ask, what do you think might happen to this thickness as the hyperverse expands. The concepts explained in this video are expanded further and other videos and papers located at jimtasano.com.